that wonderful introduction. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Say that uh, Steve is one of my big heroes. I've known him for many, many years. And actually, when we first started talking, when he was in the infusion room talking to everybody, we were, I think we'll talk about raising money for neuropathy yeah. research by uh, yeah, having a, a casino now. Right, exactly, yeah. I think we went from a riverboat to an ocean cruise <laughs> yeah. to a uh, basement. Yeah, too. yeah, my backyard, everything. <laughs> you know, I'm still trying Trump. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I heard the government might, might have a problem with us. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they also might have a problem with you and I running it. That's the problem. Yeah. Just shoot for our cut. The, the other uh, thing is, uh, before I start this, um, I'm supposed to be an expert, but it's, it seems to be an expert about something there isn't much known about. So it's not all that impressive. You don't have to read very much. And if you do research, you you don't even have to know that much. You just make it up as you go along because you're dealing with what's unknown. And as you all know, there's a lot that's not known about neuropathy, so there are lots of things to uh, research. So when I was talking to Mike about attending, uh, Steve, about attending this meeting, um, I asked him what he, want, what he wanted me to talk about, and he, asked, he said, I can talk about whatever I want to. So. I suggested uh, some upcoming clinical trials with IVIG, and he suggested um, uh, perhaps uh, talking about new developments. Um, in fact, um, he's very persuasive, so he uh, either persuades, uh, persuaded or um, intimidated people that work with him to all take large doses of B6, and they all developed new hmm. but they stopped quickly. <laughs> so they published a paper without naming names, you know, reporting. <laughs> So, and, and still, I see people come into the office that take a huge amount you know, of B6. Does that help with around. severe pain? Well, it's, it can cause pain. If you <coughs> the other hand, if you're B6 deficient, then you need to uh, take it. So to, to summarize all those things, what's the best thing for severe pain? Well, uh, uh, I, I don't know about, well, marijuana is very good for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've discussed that many times. <laughs> Which is uh, an error. Uh, other than that, uh, it's really trial and error. If somebody reports that something helps, something helps. So there's really no way of knowing what's going to help you specifically without trying it. But these other, you know, additives uh, might work uh, for pain if they treat the underlying condition, and then the pain would be reduced because the nerve damage is reduced. The one has to find out what the cause is. It, it's one way of doing it. The other way is just trying different things. How do you find the cause? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another issue. So how do you find a okay. cause? Okay, well, there has to be a cause, right? Yes. So uh, my, my approach to, to medicine is, is rather very uh, mechanical. You know, it's like a car engine. If you can figure out what, what, what went wrong, you could fix it. But the problem is we can't always figure out what went wrong. So we could figure out what's wrong in about two-thirds of the cases. In about a third of the cases, we can't. That's why we order all these tests, and sometimes they come back with inf informative, and sometimes they're not. So if you one of those people where you don't know what the cause is, you could start, um, you know, in the old days we used to give steroids just in case it's inflammatory. We can't do that anymore because people are much more stricter about trying things which might have side effects. Or in the old days we could give IVAGs a trial. Some patients improve, the pain improves just on IVAG. Now we can't do that unless you can be proven to have CIDP as as uh, Steve mentioned, etc. But these things you could try. So for example, if you take carotene fumarate and you feel better, it's probably because the underlying cause is inflammatory. Um, but it's um, sometimes it's luck, sometimes it's trying other things. What may work for one, as far as a painkiller, may not work for another. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's DNA, it's, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. So if it works but, for me, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you, right. and vice versa. But, but there's this whole thing about medicinal marijuana now. We yeah, can I love grow. It. People are allowed, to, if you're a caregiver, you could grow it, or if, if you have yourself have pain and yeah. get a prescription, you could grow two plants or something. And, really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's in most states, I think, approve it now. 13 sure. states have it approved. 13 states yeah. have it. Yeah. So, and it's kind of interesting that a lot of my uh, wealthiest patients use it for their pain because, you know, they get their doorman to get it for. <laughs> oh, it does work. Uh, um, along the lines of what 
what she was saying, you can't take this gabapentin because it just makes you dopey or whatever. You can't tolerate it. And um, your pain is, is in your feet, and let's say it's just burning, incredible burning, and it's these band-like uh, pressure things. And is there something topical you can use on your feet? Why the cane there? There's lidocaine, there's capsaicin, okay. there are different things. But I've heard, I've heard of other things besides, lidocaine did nothing for me. I've heard of Voltaren and ketamine and amitriptyline. And, amitriptyline. Uh, do yeah. any of those other things work besides? The, they work for, for um, short periods of time because they get absorbed quickly. <clears throat> the lidoderm patch is slow release, so if that works, that could work for long periods of time. The only other thing is the, cup, no. the high dose capsation patch, which burns the nerve endings, and that could provide uh, long term relief for several weeks. Mm. Uh, yeah, but I tried it doesn't that. work for everybody. So what, what was the, uh, the process is uh, you coat because it, the high dose is very painful. <laughs> you apply, so you coat your foot with the dense layer of, of uh, lidocaine cream, and you put the patch over it for about an hour. Yeah. Then you take it off. So the lidocaine cream. Uh, Prevents the acute pain. And will that will that help those? What I can't find on the internet at all. This band like where it feels like somebody's right. pulling a huge rubber band right. between your foot. Will it, it, it help? That? It doesn't work for everyone, but it depends on the type of neuropathy. So um, some neuropathies are kind of what we call multifocal, so the symptoms can occur anywhere in the face, arms, chest, legs, and it's kind of sporadic and come and go. Uh, other neuropathies are distal, so the most, depending on the cause, the most distal part of the nerves are the most vulnerable. The nerves go from the spinal cord to the tips of your fingers and to the um, feet. So uh, in a length-dependent neuropathy, typically the toes start first, you, know, you get numb or pain. And then as it progresses, it, it moves more proximally. And then when it gets to um, the mid-calves, the length from the spinal cord to the mid-calves mid, uh, is about the same as to your fingertips. So then you start getting it towards in, in your fingertips and then it moves progressively both. I uh, hope it doesn't, but it, it can move progressively proximally uh, both in your arms and legs. Could that still be diabetic neuropathy? That, that, yeah, di there are many different types of diabetic neuropathy. That's the most common uh, type of diabetic neuropathy, so distal neuropathy. Other people with diabetes get um, this uh, multifocal neuropathy, which is probably has some inflammatory component, um, and others get uh, single nerves affected, um, which is called mononeuropathy multiplex. So it's, it's a very complex disease. I'm sorry, yes? Is acupuncture affected? How do you, because I get calls constantly, and everybody here okay, has the same problem weather. Okay? The weather relate to the neuropathy. Mm -hmm. Maybe you hear people mumbling. Maybe, yeah. When the brand mercury pressure goes up and down, our bodies go crazy. Um, yeah, that makes sense, actually. Because, for example, if you have neuropathy, uh, you, the amount of damage probably doesn't change hour to hour, minute to minute, day to day. It's, it's kind of there. And sometimes you feel it more than others. So for example, if you're lying in bed and you don't have any other stimuli, it sometimes feels worse. Uh, Nothing's changing on earth, but you feel more pain. And then uh, local conditions, for example, the body is uh, made to operate at optimal temperature and fluid pressure. So, for example, sometimes if it's too hot or too cold, uh, the nerves fire more, depending on where the damage is going to come. So, uh, temperature can affect um, how you feel. And barometric pressure really changes the tissue pressure, which is why um, people with arthritis, for example, can tell when the parametric pressure is dropping. Same thing with nerves. Not everybody, but it's it's very much an individual um, thing. Um, but for example, some people, if the feet feel very cold, if they soak in more water, that helps, and vice versa. But everybody's different, and, and it's really a matter of trial and error to find out what works for you. All right, we have time for any other questions. Okay, uh, Joe, the lady, and then we'll call. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to thank Steve for inviting me, for all of you for being so attentive. And thank you. All good, great questions. The truth of the matter is he invited himself. I didn't ask him. <laughs>